Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Carly. And I'm Ange. And today we're watching Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 4. I mean, I don't even really know what to say about last episode. We had a bit to say in the discussion, but it definitely shocked us quite a bit. There's like a total shift in the show now. Yeah, you see, they tricked us with the first couple of episodes, making JJK very wholesome. So cruel, man. So cruel. Uh, and then it just switched really quick. Toji. He just came in and did his thing. <laughs> He really did. He took down Gojo, so he's kind of like dead on the floor right now. And then he shot Rico in the head after her and Ghetto had a wholesome moment and they were going to go home. It was Ghetto's face that got me so bad, that scene. Mm. Obviously, Rico's face as well. But yeah, dude, he was like devastated. And then he brought in all of his curses. Yeah, that's previewing this episode. So it looks like yeah. we're going to get Ghetto versus Toji. I think that was actually pointed out that we didn't remember was that curse scarf that Toji has around his neck, Ghetto had in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the movie. That's crazy. I'm so upset we didn't remember. So maybe that would assume that Ghetto wins. I don't know exactly. Yeah. Um, well, he like takes curses from others, right? He'll at least take that curse. Yes. We know that. Yeah. Also, you guys showed a bit of love on our new segment, MVP of the episode, right? Yeah. So um, if you guys have any ways of improving it or any feedback, make sure to leave that in the comment section below. We will continue to do it throughout this um, season two of JJK. But yeah, this episode... <laughs> From what I've heard, it's probably going to be um, just as good as the last. Uh, we've turned the action up a notch. Well, I saw that last episode got like an almost perfect rating on IMDb. I think it was 9.8 or something. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we know that this is like a five episode arc. So these next two episodes, I'm sure they're just going to like absolutely go off. Yeah, and this episode is going to start off with a, a massive fight. But also, if you guys are interested in getting the full uncut reaction to this episode, I'll leave a link to our Patreon down below. Also, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It would really help us out. But anyway, should we get into it? Let's get into it. I gotta show it again. We know what happened. A different angle this time. Uh, that's really good, Mappa. I appreciate it. <sighs> the annoying thing is, she wasn't even gonna go anyway. He killed her for nothing. It's the soundtrack. Let's go. Oh, nice save, Octopus. Is Toji on the bloody dragon? Yeah. <laughs> dragon went after him. I love that curse. It looks sick. Yeah. Did you just take her down? This dude is an absolute beast. I think this is one of my favorite OPs. It is incredible. That I've heard on the channel. I love it. But see the way they set up Rico in the OP? Like, yep. you know, she's going to be Just an like they did with Junpei. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seeing a pattern here. Someone was pointing out that this OP is from, like, Gojo's perspective. Stop. That's my favorite part. I love Ghetto so much. <laughs> Season one, Carly never would have thought season two, Carly would say that. No. Oh, yeah, true. No one's yeah. going to track him. There he is. Yeah, because they'll be able to sense the cursed tool, right? I'm just going to walk him with a gun. Get... This guy's getting cocky now. Yeah. Father like son. Megami uses the shadows. 
Hmm. Oh, dang. Ew. Oh. That's impressive. That's I pretty cool. I think that's how it would work. Oh yeah, true. It's making him stronger. Yeah. Dude, the soundtrack is so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, there is destruction inside the school right- Oh! <laughs> what is that? <gasps> oh, dude. Look at him dodge. It's like what he did to Gojo. The Rainbow Dragon is dead. Is it not? What? Who's this? Some horror shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> I got him. Ooh. Come on, Ghetto. Nice. Be careful. Now he sucks it up. He's letting him know his technique, making it stronger. Oh, that one's gonna taste like an extra juicy shit. <laughs> oh. oh dear. He had the nerve to to cross him out. I really think Shotgun's gonna have to get involved and heal them both. Oh, Toji does not hold back. He just did. He just said Megumi. Yeah. He that remembered. was one of the most brutal fights. Yes. He remembered Just making his name. All of them. Hold on, yeah. Are you kidding me? He's got to get his pay. May please bury her or something. He's an interesting fellow. So, yeah, he doesn't care yeah. as long as... Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, Toji, man. Oh! Oh, dear. What a haunting sight for him. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, reverse curse nice. technique. Nice. Knew it. Okay. Oh shit. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm happy I got that right. Remembered that. He's proud. Yeah, he seems like... Yeah, right? That's what I was thinking. His eyes were all crazy. Oh. Yeah, man looks like he's on a high. <laughs> high on life. <laughs> oh, 
my gosh. You're not getting him this time. He won't make that mistake twice. Koji's not prepared this time no. either. He had an elaborate plan before. Oh, this Red? was in the, the trailer. He's, he's going to hit it. Reversal red. His first time. I love that little <laughs> scream that the voice actor did before. Yeah. Fucking. His eyes are glowing. Look at him. He's just this is sick. fun with him at this point. Something's on, not off. <laughs> I think Gojo's about to mess him up. Yep. Okay. He's on another level now. Oh, chills. Oh my gosh, man. The music! Yeah, it's so good. We love a good piano. <gasps> He's gonna do Hello Purple, is he actually? Yeah. Look at his face. We have a purple background right now, don't we? Very fitting. He's dead. Get he, him! He's not escaping that. Nah. It wasn't business anymore, now it's personal for him. Oh, yeah, okay. See you later, Toby. Oh, yeah. oh, shit. <laughs> the man is still standing somehow. <laughs> He's internalizing his last words. It's Megami he thinks about in his last moments. Yeah. And this is how Gojo knew. Yeah. Wow. He died standing up. Oh my god. Dude. So this is how Gojo like intervened with Megami and then yeah. took him to Jujutsu. He couldn't have the same thing happen to Megami. No. Nah. What is going on? I don't know. This is like the Tengen Sama group? Uh, it's the religious group. Yeah. Oh shit. He's on a yeah, different level mentally. Okay, you can say Ghetto's changing already. Yeah, both of them are. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, the different sides. That was sick. Ghetto is blue. He's being, like, pushed away. Yeah, like the, the blue and the red there, I think it symbolized like the limitless technique that Gojo uses. Blue and um, red. Yeah, and it's like Ghetto was being pushed away because that's like blue. Yeah. And then maybe Gojo's like coming to terms with himself, even though he seemed really detached after he got a whooping from uh, Toji. I think... Yeah, it's definitely showing, like, the change that's about to happen in both of them. Yeah, or Toji, yeah, has been at the centre of that change. It's pretty mm. much because of his actions. Like, that's crazy because this character, we've got four episodes out of him, but he had so much impact on the story, Megami's dad. Um, oh, yeah. A lot of impact on the story. Uh, also, I really liked um, his death scene, actually, so... Not only did he die standing up, which is pretty symbolic, 
Um, but he did actually say something in his last moments, and it was to protect his son. Yeah, make sure that the same thing didn't happen to him because obviously something happened with Toji where he was separated from his family um, and, you know, he became the person that he is because we saw that flashback of him holding his son. Yeah, he doesn't like the Zenin clan, but I don't even think it's that. I actually think that because he's seen what Gojo can do, he's like, my son would be safest with Gojo. That's yeah, what, that, right. That's how I I'm viewing that situation, and and that's that's cool how that um links into season one and what Gojo was actually saying in season one. So he kind of like almost intercepted Megami, uh, from the Zenin clan, mm. um, which is pretty cool. Now my hunch was correct about the reverse curse technique, um, and Gojo using it. I said that in the discussion of last episode, uh. And then Shoko actually healed Ghetto. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I kind of forgot that. that That's her whole thing. You know, she was the nurse in season one. I'm sure one. you did bring it up, though. Did I? Yeah. Maybe. Last episode, I think you did. But, oh, shit. Gojo's, Gojo's little scene there uh, where we actually saw Hollow Purple. I didn't expect to see it in, this, um, no. in these five episodes. Because he hadn't even mastered Red. Yeah, Reversal Red. Yeah, so he managed to do it in the one sitting, Reversal Red, and then Hollow Purple, is it? Well, yeah, I guess once he had known both techniques, then Purple was just kind of like, whatever. Yeah, I guess Purple is not just like, whatever. <laughs> well, uh, you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. he, if he can do both, then yeah. I guess he can mix them, um, which was really cool to see. I guess that's why he was trialing like that Reversal Red, just in case he'd need it one day, mm -hmm. you know? So I guess he wasn't so complacent after all. Gojo sometimes can seem like a complacent character, but you can see why he ended up getting so strong because he didn't expect to get bested in a in a fight, um, and he and he did the first time. It he, was just like the way Toji came in was just like like he was unhinged. Like he just came in with everything, didn't give anyone a second to like breathe. I think it was quite the opposite. That like just based on how he explained it. If anything, he was just extremely calculated and had a really good plan. Like, he he went through all that shit about um, being detected mm. and um, having the curse um, I know, small but I'm enough. saying, like, his attacks. Like, he didn't give them a second to calculate oh, what was going on. And yeah. Who expects that to happen in a fight? Usually the fights we see, it builds up. Mm. Toji came in with, like, everything he had. Yeah. The first second the fight started, you know, like it wasn't a fight. It was an ambush. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got chills a couple of times in that episode. The The OST was really good, uh, as it usually is. Uh, and then like Gojo almost acting like a psycho in that fight, in the rematch with Toji. Yeah. He felt so like elated and he was yeah. like floating. He was like a godlike figure there. He, he What did he say? It said, it's like something about being the chosen one or something along yeah, those lines. Yeah, on heaven and earth or something mm -hmm. like that. I am the chosen one or something like that. Yeah. That was that gave me chills there too. That was cool. I'm just happy that they retrieved her body. Yeah, same. I, I'm quite happy about that too. Uh, I'm wondering what's going to happen to the, the religious group, star religious group. Yeah, and well, they needed her, obviously, um, almost as like a sacrifice with Tengen Sama, right? So that the evolution didn't go forward. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of can't use her anymore in that way. So I'm wondering what happens there too. Yeah, Gojo just wanted to kill him. Like, he, he was... Yeah, this was always... Not always. This was Gojo and Ghetto's plan. Yeah. Last episode, we saw them saying, like, if she doesn't want to go, we're not going to force her. Mm -hmm. Um. Gojo was like, what are you scared to fight Tengen Sama? You don't think we can do yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this will be interesting to see how this unfolds. Well, I'm more interested because it, it looks like we're finally now seeing the impact that the fight has had on these two characters and, and how it's going to change them a bit. Um, Well, a lot. Yeah. Not a bit. Uh, it's especially, a life-changing event. Yeah, Ghetto's, he's not well. He's not right after that. Um. You can see he's definitely seeing things completely different mm. considering Toji was not a sorcerer, not someone with cursed energy. Yes. 
and Ghetto has always sworn to protect those sort of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but now this person has caused so much destruction. Um, so I guess that might explain his, like, Voldemort complex that was in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, where yeah. he was, like, calling them... What was he calling them? Monkeys and stuff? Yeah, ants or something. He was calling them something. Monkeys? Maybe that's, that's what Fraser calls Saiyans. But yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe he did refer to them as monkeys. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. That rings a bell. Um, but I guess that kind of explains that characterization with Ghetto a little bit more. Yeah, I'm wondering... Maybe it's, like, stupid of me to say. I don't know. I'm just wondering if if that is enough to change, like, a really good young man into, you know, what he is in season season one. I sort of expected a curse to, like, take over him and for him to be, like, somewhat of a vessel. Like, that ghetto that we know in season two is just gone completely and something has taken over. I think... I think that's from season one, but I want to know how he got to zero because he yes. still, he was a, he was a, you know, because he was like a dead set villain in JJK Zero, the movie. Yeah. In season one, he's got the stitching and stuff like that. And Gojo supposedly kills Ghetto at the end of JJK Zero. Zero, yeah. So I, I don't even know if that's Ghetto. That just looks like Ghetto in season one. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Oh, we theorized about this ages ago. I forgot in what episode mm. um, or if we theorized this in the movie, but I highly doubt that that's Ghetto inside. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I'm trying to remember back to whether or not the times that we saw Ghetto mm. or Ghetto in season one, if he had memories that Ghetto would have. Yeah, like if he said something to imply that he remembers his Correct. relationship with Gojo. Correct. Yeah. So I don't know if we saw that. That might be the sign. Ghetto lost that fight with Toji. Toji revealed um, the technique and that that gives you a boost. Um, yeah. I thought that was only with someone with cursed energy, but I don't think that applies. I think it's just if you reveal your technique, it makes the technique stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, I am happy we got to see purple. That was a surprise. Uh, even reversal red. Yeah. I had a feeling we'd see reversal red. Yeah. Not purple, though. I didn't expect that. No, same. So that was pretty cool. Um, so destructive as well. Cut the cleanest hole out of him. I don't think it was clean. It was clean. It just took a chomp out of him. It was like the exact shape. <laughs> I, I guess so. We'll go into the MVP segment now. I think the MVP of the episode probably has to be Gojo, doesn't it? Got to be Gojo. We might even put the quote up on the screen or whatever he said. That was that was really cool. The the chosen one or whatever he was calling mm. himself. Um, yeah, he managed to come back and absolutely whoop Toji's ass. Considering Toji was just wreaking havoc everywhere he was going. Yeah, I'm sure there's like a level of holding back for. The Jujutsu Sorcerer's in fights, but after he'd seen all that crap, and after he like elevated, is that the word? Or increased his in- increased his his strength and yeah, all that. His power level and everything. His it powers. was just like end game for Toji. There, there was no holding back anymore with Gojo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see his eyes glowing and shit like that. So the Infinity was like, yeah, really kicking into, um. Some might argue that Toji went out the MVP as well. So Toji, in his final moments, uh, died while standing, whilst also saving his son. Mm, yeah, of course, that's to be mentioned. Yeah, rather than making him an enemy of Gojo. It's funny because Megami could have grown up to be an enemy of um, exactly of Gojo and stuff like that. He's, yeah. Look, he still might be. I don't know. We've seen some shit in uh, at the end of season one. I think he's on the no, right path. He's on the right path. Say I'm saying he's got a crazy streak in him, like his dad Toji. So. Yeah, but it's all about who guides you, you know. Yeah. No, I could say that for Ghetto as well. Yeah, I don't know, man. He was brought up in the right circumstances, and look how he turned out. Look, they can definitely do a parallel when it comes to like the main three, and by the main three, I mean you've got. Gojo, Shoko, and Ghetto. And then you've got Yuji, Nobara, and Megami. So there's definitely, like, they're doing parallels there between the characters. Now, if Yuji's meant to kind of be that Gojo-like person, at least in terms of personality. Okay, you know what? They might change it around on us. So Yuji will follow in the path of 
hear me out, <laughs> Ghetto. Because <laughs> Schooner will, like, you know, oh, yeah. eventually okay. take over. Yeah. Um, yeah, they might do a little double take on us there. Because obviously there's likeness with Yuji and Gojo. Yeah. But, yeah, to mix it up, they might change it around. So yeah. Yuji follows <laughs> Ghetto. Uh, Megami follows Gojo. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure, but they're definitely doing something there. Yeah. Uh, but but um, just going back to the MVP segment yep. quickly, I, I do think it was Gojo. It was Gojo for me too. Yeah. And if it's somebody different for you, please let us know why. We'd love to hear the reasoning. Yeah. Also, let us know if you have any improvements for the segment too. Yes. Um, but mainly, we just want it to be a discussion. Yeah. Um, so we talk about why they were the MVP of the episode and some of your favorite moments in the episode too. Mm, um, this is definitely just like an opinion based segment. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think in next episode, we're probably going to, because it's going to be the last episode of this uh, pro prologue, yep. I guess. I think a few things will happen. I don't think there's going to be a whole heap of action like episodes three and four. I think we'll touch base with the other characters, Utahime and Shoko, Nanami, hopefully, uh, Haibara, mm -hmm. all of them. Uh, the principal, all those dudes. And I think what you'll see is the characters will see a change in Ghetto and we're going to start to see that more prominent. Yeah, right. In next episode. Oh, man. Say goodbye to the good times they're over. Yeah. I do want them to give a little bit more time to that Ghetto transition. I would like that too. Yes. I, I personally would just like to see a little bit more because I, I didn't want Ghetto to just be... A character that's thrown in to this season and us only see that he's a nice dude. I, I do want to see that transition. Yeah. Um, because we've grown to like Ghetto a lot, mm -hmm. especially in the OP and stuff like that too. Some really wholesome moments um between him and his best buddy. So that's what I'm hoping from next episode. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Just having Ghetto fleshed out a little bit. Thank you so much for watching our reaction. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. It would really help us out. For early access to all of our reactions, you can support us on Patreon if you'd like. And yeah, thank you so much again. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.